something to say, something to say. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21, and I got Kyle in the background. Say hi, Kyle. Hi. All right, so what we got here is now the guys at Venom and uh, my fellow teammates at Team Venom have been doing a series of videos lately talking about battery safety and battery maintenance. All right, so this is me trying to jump on the bandwagon late as usual. All right, so what you got in front of us are my Venom Pro Touch 1350 watt charger. Okay. This is an awesome piece of hardware. But in the back, I've also got my Pro Power Unit, which is an adjustable power supply, which is necessary to feed this guy because this doesn't have a built-in AC power supply. It needs dedicated DC juice. Cool thing though, is that you can actually run this off of a LiPo. So if you're one of those people that have more batteries than you know what to do with, you can actually rig up a big LiPo pack to just power this guy to do fuel charging. But that's a different topic for another video. So why do I have all these guys here? Well. I've had a relationship with Venom here for a few years now, and one of the things about having a, a long-term relationship is that every long-term relationship needs to have a little maintenance every now and then. But this, yes, Kyle. <laughs> All right. So Kyle is sitting here laughing at me. I assume thinking of some strange relationship analogies that he'll probably fill me in. With Just go. The camera. All right. Anyway. So, but anyway. Thing about <laughs> the chart, the power supply is waking itself up, uh, cooling itself off. Uh, anyway, so the thing about having batteries for a long time is that when you beat the snot out of a battery, batteries accumulate damage. So basically, the act of running a battery is doing damage to the battery. But that's just you know that's just how it works. So over time, though, you can end up accumulating damage. So you're your batteries aren't going to give you the same level of performance as they did when they were brand new. And that's nothing wrong with the battery. That's just life. So I've beaten the living crap and snot out of these batteries. And I've tried to use good practices to keep them maintained. Every now and then I had a little issue, a little slip up. But I'll talk about that once I get into it. But overall, so putting them in age order, these guys are about three almost four years old now uh, and these are actually before I became sponsored by Venom and over here these guys are all about two years old so this guy these guys have actually you know got you know, a few seasons off of these guys you know again uh, a couple seasons so about two year old batteries and they're still great basher batteries they get a lot of power a lot of juice have a lot of fun with these guys but the problem is if I want to use these competitively, I would have some issues. And the reason is that, like I said, I beat the snot out of these things. They've gone through a couple years of charges, and they've also, and they have gone through a couple years of charges, and they've gone a couple of years of long-term long-term storage cycles as well. And that can be an issue. So let me just go ahead and jump in here. So you see my Pro Touch charger here. One of the cool features of this is that this charger has the ability to do internal resistance measurements. That's a really important thing. So what so what is internal resistance? So if you think about this battery here, this guy is actually a 3S LiPo battery. It's made up of three cells that are all put together in series that run together to give me a total of 11.1 volts. Okay. So and you actually have this little lead that comes out of here that allows me to go in and take a measurement of how each of the batteries are doing. This battery is a 3S battery, meaning it has three battery packs or three cells inside of it that are hooked up in series. So electricity goes through and flows one, two, three, through. So when electricity tries to flow through a wire, it's like trying to push water through a pipe. So you end up getting a, a, a property called resistance, which is basically a measurement of how hard the electricity has to push to go through a thing. Batteries, actually even though they're generating power they're generating electricity they also have a certain amount of internal resistance that internal resistance makes the batteries have something called voltage sag which means that as it's flowing power the dip voltage dips down and it also causes the battery to heat up so if you have a battery so like i said this was actually rated at 100 c so when it was brand new i took measurements i showed that this was 1.6 milli ohms Per cell, it means 1.6 thousandth of an ohm per cell. Okay, and there's 
I'll have other videos to talk about internal resistance and what that means and all that such. But over the course of running this thing really hard for two years and going through cycles, you know, where I was pushing out three, 400 amps from these batteries, it accrues damage. So when I plug this guy up to my venom battery here, this guy has the really cool feature of being able to measure the internal resistance of my battery. So if I go in here, you see, I go, So if I go in here and I can go into the view screen, measuring internal resistance, you see right here it's showing 21 milliohms for the whole pack. So I click here in the unit. So this tells me the voltage of each of them. I can click here and I can see that now this cell actually has an internal resistance of about six, between six and seven milliohms per cell now that's actually not bad that's not bad at all for like a brand new bashing pack actually a lot of batteries like a 20 or 30c battery will have something like this uh, from the factory for per cell but for 100c battery you know not so much now given that you know sometimes like this battery's actually been in storage charge for a little while uh so, since i haven't had a chance to get out and do some hardcore runs so sometimes by cycling the battery several times, you can actually bring the battery back to life. You can get this internal resistance number to fall a little bit. So actually this battery has actually gone, gotten better over the course of this year, but it's still not what it was new, which was like one or two. So again, that's just one of those things to keep in mind as you run batteries hard, if you don't have something like this meter here, or if you don't have something like this charger that can actually give you an internal resistance number, you could be getting internal resistance building up over time and not even know it, never even, never even realize it. Now, what that really means is that when you start to use this guy for racing, so like you said, you know, it's a 100C battery. You're thinking that you still have, you know, one of the baddest batteries on the track, which it was even though it was new. But now it's accrued some damage because of uh, the years that you've been running it. And your battery's not dishing out the same level of performance as the guy next to you with a brand new pack. So if you're, especially if you're a serious racer, and you're looking for the edge, you know, just because you bought the top of the line battery three, two, three, four years ago, doesn't mean that it's still the best battery on the field. And that's also just kind of combined with the fact that every year as new battery chemistries come out just stock batteries get better and better so i'm just going to go ahead and just test one more just for the heck of it just kind of show the difference so i'm going to test this bias battery here you know the, these guys like i said you know they are pushing four years old now so let's see what this guy does I'm just going to go back, back again, back one more time, go back to the view, measuring internal resistance, 77 milliohms. So you can see here that this guy is actually 22, 37, 18 milliohms per cell. Okay. Let's do his, his stable mate. So I'm now doing the matching battery set and this brings up another important point if you're running batteries as a unit like if you have a 6s or an 8s setup you want to make sure that both of your mat your batteries over time are still matched so let's go back again retest and see this one's 43 milliohms so over time and just because of different running this battery is actually much better than this matching cell. So if I hadn't tested these guys, I wouldn't realize that this bat that the battery over here that I just tested is almost twice as high resistance as this matching battery. 
and for, from the outside, they're completely identical. So you wouldn't have any way of telling them apart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do these last two. So these are gonna 50 C's. Now this one right here, see it's notice it says it's bad. I actually had uh, an instance, I left these guys, I left it at storage charts, but one of them's developed an iffy cell. Um, me being me, I figured out a way to bring it back to life. But I'll show you the difference between these two packs. So this here, see 22 mil ohms. You see that you've got basically between six and eight mil ohms per cell. Again, very good for just a general purpose bashing type of battery. So let's test the one that's showing bad. Right. 44 milliohms. So that's showing resistance of 14, 8, and 20 milliohms per cell. So go back so this is that storage charge now if I was to go and cycle this a few more times I might be able to wake these cells back up I might be able to get it back to life or I might not but again if you don't have a way of testing your cells then you really don't know what you're running with and identical looking batteries none of these batteries are puffed oh and that's just some uh, I'll touch on a second see these batteries none of them are puffed they're all from the outside view, look perfect. The only difference is these bias batteries here. People always complain that bias batteries puff. Well, if you look at it, this these batteries actually contain, they're, they're, they have these little straps that are around the cells. This batteries can actually expand and contract as they get hotter and colder. So when you first run these batteries, these little cores inside, they, when the battery expands a little bit, it swells up and it goes back down. So it looks like it's puffed, but if you touch the cell, it's nice and firm. You feel a little bit of give, and then you feel the firm cells underneath. This isn't a puffed cell. A really puffed cell, when you squeeze one, it's, it's puffed, it's firm the whole way, because it's expanded internally. So just kind of a little side note on these bias packs. But again, these are all visually looking very good, but when you dig into the numbers, you see that there's a much different story to be told. So that's one of the reasons why you should, and if, especially if you're really serious about racing or you're serious about the hobby, you need to invest in some serious tools so that you can understand what you're running with so that when you step out and you get ready to run, you know that you've got the best in your pocket. And that's also why you need to make sure that you budget so that you can invest in having the best hardware available for when you do need to refresh your arsenal. So as you can see, our house has had a, a little bit of investment so that the arsenal is strong. All right guys. So in a later video, because this has already gotten a little long, I'll go back and I'll test these brand new batteries and show you what they look like from the factory. And, but I guarantee they're gonna be a lot better than these older guys. You know, because time marches on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my castle connectors on these guys. And then I'm gonna do some benchmark testing on them. And then you're gonna see these guys in the real world, pushing some real cars really, really fast. All right, guys, our host 21 signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. And don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, social media, all the other good stuff. And don't forget to come by and check out the RC Physics Sandbox. We've got lots of interesting stuff going on there. I mean, you know, so feel free to come by, talk about RC's life or anything you guys want to think about. Just keep it clean and family friendly. Okay, guys, our house 21 signing out. Peace.